Hi, everyone. Welcome to what's new in OpenShift 4.14 Developer Edition. My name is Balaji Sivasubramanian. I run the product for the Developer Tools portfolio, and I'm, I'm going to present this uh, edition along with our product managers you see on the screen. Now, let's talk about, uh, before we get started, let's talk about 2024 priorities for Red Hat Developer Tools. Um, it's an exciting year for us in terms of new products and new initiatives that we are able to come to bring to market. Um, we have three big priorities. Number one is developer productivity. How do we how do we help improve developer productivity for uh, lots of engineering organizations that are struggling with it um, as they're work trying to collaborate across multiple teams, able to share best practices and be able to deliver software on time. So one of the number one thing we're doing here is the ability to provide, um, we're delivering an enterprise grade internal developer portal platform based on backstage.io called the Red Hat Developer Hub. And we're gonna to continue to focus on delivering that for this year. We also wanna differentiate the Developer Hub offering uh, in terms of helping enterprise become more productive with it, with the dynamic plugins, the ability to add plugins dynamically being able to support a large ecosystem of validated plugins, as that is one of the key requirements for the, any, any developer portals, and be able to have enterprise security, ability to audit, ability to trace, ability to um, do role-based access control. The other part I want to, want to do is that uh, at the developer tools at Red Hat is to be able to integrate uh, with the value added integration to a rest of a Red Hat portfolio, including RHEL, Ansible, OpenShift, and other products. Going on to the next topic are on local development. Developers are, again, having difficulty in developing container applications as well as being able to deploy to Kubernetes. One of the key uh, product that we are addressing in this marketplace is called the Podman Desktop. Podman Desktop has had tremendous success um, uh, in terms of it's a completely open source project and it's available on Podman uh, Desktop uh, website and you can download it today and you have hundreds of hundreds of thousands of downloads already happening and we are able to provide you a first class ability to build container applications and also be able to test these applications locally in a Kubernetes, either OpenShift local or in a Kubernetes flavor and be able to deploy to remote clusters, remote Kubernetes clusters, either it's uh, any Kubernetes flavor clusters or OpenShift. We're also working in our local development is to be able to help developers um, working with their IDEs to be able to integrate with the Red Hat products through OpenShift integration, serverless integration, and other uh, languages integration uh, right from their IDE. And last but not the least, I want to briefly touch upon uh, what we announced uh, in the summit 2023 is around Red Hat focus around providing developers uh, build trusted software, software. Software supply chain attacks are very large uh, and, and is a very, you know, very impactful if some such incidents happen in your environments. And Red Hat is focused on providing you a set of tools to help you secure your software supply chain. And one of the other areas that, uh, from my team perspective, that we'll be focusing on is around how do you integrate with Red Hat Developer Hub for an overall better developer experience. So you can basically go, go from code, building a secure software, being able to build and being able to deliver and being able to collaborate with the rest of our developer, developers in your, in your organization. That's all for now. And uh, we you know continue watching and to get updates on specific products from, from rest of our product managers. Hi, my name is Brad Baysmore. I'm the product manager for Red Hat Developer Hub. And really quickly, I wanted to just cover a high level what is Red Hat Developer Hub and some exciting announcements about it. So first off, Red Hat Developer Hub is built on the open source project called Backstage, which was developed at Spotify. And it's supposed to allow developers to focus on what they do best, which is coding. So instead of developers being, well, stuck in bureaucratic nightmares, support tickets, and documentation graveyards. Everything is centralized and managed as part of Backstage. So what is Backstage itself actually? Well, it's made up of five key things. A centralized software catalog that keeps track of all of the application ownership, metadata, and everything else, such as you know services, websites, libraries, and, every, and all the other fun jazz. 
and then plugins, which they extend the functionality and they provide customization. It's a way for you to create a user interface into external applications or internal applications. So an example is a plugin for GitHub, so you can see issues related to a item in your software catalog. The next up is software templates or the golden path templates. This is a automation system, a lightweight one, that allows you to quickly spin up new projects and standardized toolings. And what it really does is it allows you to take your organization's best practices and create a self-service experience for the developers. So let's say they need a new namespace in OpenShift, instead of having to file a support ticket and wait for days, they can fill out a a uh, software template and the software template will take care of the rest following those best practices using the already existing uh, uh, automation framework your, your organization has. The next is tech docs. And this is really as straightforward as it gets. Developers do not like Google Docs or Microsoft Word or all these other WYSIWYG editors that become difficult to maintain through time. So what tech doc does is the documentation is represented as markdown files that lives in the repository of the resource that the documentation is written about. Backstage then can uh, uh, keep that information in sync and render that information in the UI. And the last, tying it all together is search, which helps you find the right information across your entire backstage ecosystem. So now documentations, templates, plugins, all of it can be found and centralized through search. And plugins, let's look at that just a little bit closer. So with plugins, as you can see here in Red Hat Developer Hub, there's quite a few that are uh, available right out of the box with Red Hat Developer Hub prepackaged. And one of the ones that's really exciting is the topology view uh, from the developer persona in OpenShift. You also have the ability to pull in issues and pull requests, let it be from your GitHub system or GitLab. You also can do CI CD, let it be with Tekton or Argo or whatever it may be. Um, and all these plugins centralize a UI around the resource so that developers don't have to go tracking down 900 different UIs and logins. It's all centralized in one place. So let's look at what actually Red Hat Developer Hub is fundamentally. It's a nice little stack here. So first at the top, we have the supported plugin bundle. So these are six plugins that Red Hat has developed that Red Hat fully offers a 24-7 premium support on. These come with the actual backstage instance, which is also managed by Red Hat Developer Hub, fully supported. In the middle there, that little sandwich there is community plugins. So these are the plugins that your community has that you can use. And all of this can run on top of any version of OpenShift and soon EKS, AKS, and GK. To learn more, go to developers.redhat.com slash RHDH. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Uh, let's talk about the uh, Red Hat Developer Hub plugins. Uh, we just announced the release of uh, Developer Hub version 0.2 in September. Uh, this is our last release before GA. In this release, we have had some updates around plugins. Uh, more than 20 plugins are now bundled with Developer Hub. So as soon as you install the product, you'll get these plugins right off the bat in the catalog, and you can start using them. These plugins are for various Red Hat products, like Keycloak, Tekton, the Topology View, OpenShift. And there are also plugins created by other uh, developers and uh, third-party companies around their own products or, or somebody else's products. Like, for example, Azure DevOps, GitHub Actions. As you can tell, we have a lot of these uh, plugins which have to do with uh, uh, DevOps-related uh, products, uh, like GFrog Artifactory for um, you know storing container images. So these plugins will work right off the bat when you install Developer Hub version 0.2. The link below will take you to our Janus IDP open source project uh, where all the plugins that Red Hat creates or, or people create as a part of Janus, they're all published over there. So you can click on the link to take a look at it. Thank you very much. And now I'll pass it on to Stevan. Moving on to Podman Desktop. So the latest version available for Podman Desktop is the version 1.4.0. Podman Desktop provides uh, application developers an easy and smooth way to work with containers and Kubernetes on their local workstation. It's available on Windows, Mac, and Linux, and provides a UI to easily interact with containers, uh, with Kubernetes environments, and transition the containers into Kubernetes objects that they can also deploy to Kubernetes uh, environments. In the latest releases we've been uh, working on uh, improving the compatibility mode with uh, docker so now it's easier when you are coming up from uh, from docker to transition from docker to uh, podman you can keep using the same command lines and the same bash script if you if you have some of them um, 
Compose, for the developer who are using Compose, it's uh, now possible to install it directly from uh, Podman desktop and also to configure it. And you also have uh, a way to manage your Compose group of containers directly from the UI of Podman desktop. So you can start, stop, restart them uh, in, from the UI directly. On uh, Kubernetes, so with Podman Desktop, you have the ability to spin up local Kubernetes environment using Minikube or Kine extension. The Minikube extension has been built by the community recently. Um, and on Kind, you now have the ability to show the version of Kubernetes that you want to use to set up your Kind clusters. The onboarding is getting improved so that uh, it will more easily configure your Podman environment and get it up running faster as well. The networking configuration is getting a, a user networking mode to more easily uh, configure VPN configuration in a WSL environment. And for the terminal that are provided inside of Podman desktop, when you want to SSH directly inside of a container, you now have persistent terminal stations. And we are also supporting Bash if you have that in your uh, in your containers. There's a lot of other bug fixes and UI UX improvements which have been introduced in the latest releases as well. And I invite you to learn more and download the latest version from podmandesktop.io website. OpenShift Local. So OpenShift Local, the latest version available is um, 2.0. 27 and it provides three different presets OpenShift with uh, the version 4.13.12, Podman preset for those who just want the container runtime version 4.4.4, and uh, MicroShift uh, if you want to experiment and get a, a lightweight OpenShift cluster running on your local uh, environment. There's also a lot of bug fixes that have been introduced. Uh, around proxy certificates, Windows demands, and, uh, and logs. OpenShift Local is also available uh, from a, a Podman desktop extension. So directly from Podman desktop, you can um, set up your OpenShift Local environment and use it for development purpose uh, as well on your workstation. So you can spin up uh, a single node cluster, or you can also spin up uh, a MicroShift environment to use for, uh, for development purpose. Maven and Gradle Java tooling. Um, Gcube version 1.14 is now available. It supports Gradle 8, Elidon, and Spring Boot Layer Jar. Um, there's also work that has been done on, uh, on improving the support of uh, M charts with uh, M chart YAML fragments. And there is also still the work going on on um, the Gcube remote development. Feel free to give it a look. Um, it allows you to, to run and debug your Java application from a local machine while you are connected to a Kubernetes clusters. Um, so there's demo available and, uh, and we are looking for feedback. So feel free to, to, to reach out with your feedback. You can learn more on the blog post uh, from, uh, from Gcube as well to learn all the, the goodness of the latest releases of, uh, of GQ. For Fabricate, Kubernetes client, the version 6.9 is available. Uh, the Kubernetes model types have been uh, updated to the version 1.28, as well as the mo OpenShift model types update to the version 4.13. Uh, there's also work which have been done on uh, the Java Generator Gradle plugin and many other things that you can learn more on the, on the different blog posts announcing the, the releases for the Fabricate Kubernetes client. Thank you, Mohit. And let's talk about OpenShift DevSpaces next. So we just uh, released a version 3.8 and we are getting ready to release version 3.9 pretty soon in the month of October. Um, what's in 3.8, we focus a lot around improving the experience for developers who want to provide their own personal access tokens for the Git repos like Bitbucket, um, GitHub, GitLab, and saving these tokens in the workspace as, as a part of the user preferences. So this is a, something new, which makes it easier for developers to provide their own tokens and access these repos. 
We also made it possible for uh, the dev file commands, which are being known as a part of dev file, you can actually bring them into VS Code Editor as tasks. So that allows you to kind of you know import tasks into VS Code directly by the specifying commands in the pattern dev files. In version 3.9 that's coming out soon, the key feature there is going to be around the ability to run Podman using kubedoc within the workspaces of dev spaces. So this allows you as a developer to now build a container from the code that you're editing in dev spaces within dev spaces and then actually run the container there as well. So this way you can do a com complete end-to-end -end development within dev spaces and don't have to go back to your local desktop and run Docker desktop. It's a key uh, feature and, and I know many customers are really excited about this. Uh, if you look, uh, look at the links below, uh, there are the admin guys and the user guys and all the documentation around version 3.8. Let's also talk about the dev sandbox for OpenShift. So the new thing is um, the, the major enhancements we have made for the developer sandbox is around consoleredhat.com. So in the past, we had a landing page in consoleredhat.com for developer sandbox. People could discover it, people could learn about it, and then to sign up, it would take them into you know, the developer redhat.com page and, and then you know go through the sign up process there, and then they can access the cluster URL from wherever they are. For now onwards, the entire sign up to access experience is actually self-contained within the console redhat.com uh, landing page. So you go in there, you discover it, you can learn about it right there, and you click on a button, you will get provision right there. And once you get provision, you'll get access buttons to launch specific parts of the technology and the platforms that are enabled within Developer Sandbox. So you'll be able to access OpenShift directly, access Dev Spaces, access, um, the access to the Rhodes Jupyter Notebooks capability. So this way, from a landing page, you can pick and choose which platform you want to experiment with and, and play around with. It's a very exciting feature, and we are going to be you know, enhancing it even further. This is the first step for us to get it in consoleredhat.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to What's New in OpenShift 4.14 Developer Edition. I'm Mohit Suman, and I'm the PM for IDE Tooling. And today, I'll be taking you what enhancements we did with respect to the new features around multiple extensions we have for Visual Studio Code, IntelliJ, and Eclipse. So let's get started. Let's start with OpenShift extension we have for VS Code and IntelliJ. We did tons of improvements around the OpenShift extension, a uh, lot of bug fixes, a lot of enhancements, and most importantly, we came up with multiple new workflows which allows developers to quickly get their apps on running on OpenShift. We got a good feedback from the uh, solution architect communities and some of the developer sessions we did at multiple conferences. So right now with OpenShift extension running on VS Code and IntelliJ, so there are three different workflows which the developer can do. One of them is to deploy their applications on top of any hybrid cloud running OpenShift. So that can be a uh, OpenShift running locally, OpenShift running on Dev Sandbox, or OpenShift running on Azure, OpenShift running on AWS. So any version of OpenShift is supported directly from this extension. The best part here is the users will get a dedicated workflow where they can deploy their applications in three different ways. Either they can deploy their apps running from a local workspace, which is already open in their editor. They can also deploy their applications, which is present in a remote Git repository. And third, they can also deploy their applications starting from a starter template project using dev files. So these are uh, a major improvement what we did, simplifying the overall workflow. The second important stuff we did was we made sure the integration of Helm into the OpenShift extension is very smooth. So right now, users can browse and install any Helm chat available on their cluster. So that way, developers will have a choice to work with different workflows around dev files, around Helm charts and other scenarios just being within their editor itself. The third major improvement we did was we integrated OpenShift serverless functions directly into the ID workflow of OpenShift. So now developers can run their functions, manage their functions, build their functions directly from the OpenShift extension. Previously, we used to have a dedicated K-native extension available on the marketplace. But now we have integrated the OpenShift serverless into the OpenShift extension also. So that way it provides a unified experience around anything OpenShift. So these are some of the major improvements what we did for the OpenShift toolkit extension. And we are going to do a lot of enhancements down the line with respect to how you can deploy your applications on Podman, how easy it becomes to create your applications, debug your application, and directly deploy with one click directly on a Podman running. It also integrates very well with Podman desktop. And 
the best part is it allows you to give you a recommendation based on your workspace open. So let's say your workspace already has a Java application open. So the extension will prompt you a dedicated Java starter project or a Java dev file that how to configure the environment variables, how to set up the networking and other stuff directly from your ID. So that way the overall simplification of the entire workflow is smooth. Let's go ahead and see what we did for the other extensions we have in our portfolio. Uh, with respect to the server connector extension, which we have for Visual Studio Code and IntelliJ, the major improvement what we did, whatever functionality which was available on Java tools uh, on the Eclipse platform is now also available on the Visual Studio Code and IntelliJ. So the customers or users who were used to running EAP Wildfly directly on an Eclipse platform can still run those middleware runtimes from VS Code IntelliJ. And we're actively improving the workflow of running EAP and Wildfly on VS Code. And this extension is also available on open VSX registry, which means that it can be very easily installed on Red Hat dev spaces. So that's one of the major improvements what we did for OpenShift 4.14. Now, one of the important workflows around IntelliJ was we have improved a lot around the Kubernetes plugin we have for IntelliJ. We did 1.0 release for IntelliJ Kubernetes. We are getting good community attraction around it, and we have improving a lot of functionalities because it's also a dependency for the OpenShift plugin we have for Kubernetes. Uh, we have improved the kube config workflow. We have improved the init containers for logs and terminals. And now users can quickly scan through the different logs they have We're running on a Kubernetes cluster, how uh, multiple terminals, which allows them to see the error logs, or allow them to see what configurations have changed, and also inspect the detailed connections, what they have for special build configs, deployment configs connected to the cluster. As I already mentioned, the serverless functions workflow is now migrated to the OpenShift Toolkit extension. So that way we are trying to make the unified experience there. Down the line, we'll also try to uh, see if we can integrate OpenShift pipelines into it so that the entire OpenShift workflow will be there in one dedicated extension. Let's go ahead and see what we have improved on the language part of the ID tooling. With the Visual Studio Code Java extension, we are reaching around 30 million installs, which is a very magnificent feat because that's a number uh, one downloaded extension available on VS Code Marketplace. We are also coming out with support of Java 21 down the line. So that's very exciting coming out from Java 8 to Java 21. That's something which uh, the customers are looking forward to when with respect to Java development. We have done a lot of improvements, feature enhancements, and performance improvements with respect to VS Code Java such as JTK detection on the local machine, improving the Gradle annotation, and also the code completion, document refactoring. So those certain small in, uh, features on the VS Code Java is, come, is done, and we are trying to make sure we release every month. With respect to the Quarkus uh, plugin we have for IntelliJ, uh, we have done tons of releases down the line. We have improved a lot of functionality. So the feature-wise, the Quarkus plugin on VS Code and Quarkus plugin on IntelliJ are slowly coming at the same level. We have the Quarkus 3 support out there. We have a very improved support for queue templates and even the language server parser, which is there for Quarkus is improved. And this is overall improving the developer experience around the whole Quarkus community we have. And we're going to enhance a lot on the IntelliJ Quarkus plugin down the line. With respect to the VS Code YAML extension, we are reaching around 14 million installs. We have done a lot of improvements around some of the validations for IPv4, V6, and also improving the schema definition for the YAML files. So VS Code YAML is used as a dependency for multiple ID extensions uh, for various companies. And this uh, acts as a very strong point when we are configuring any configuration for YAMLs. So these are some of the enhancements what we did with the overall ID tooling. We are going to improve a lot down the line and we are actively doing releases every three weeks. So feel free to uh, get in touch with us if you need any specific requirement or feature set. And thank you for your time. See you. Let's talk about the developer experience enhancements in OpenShift Console. So the developer perspective in OpenShift Web Console was enhanced in version 4.14 with some key capabilities around our layered products like serverless and pipelines. One of the key ones is that you can now actually test serverless functions directly inside the console. So you just, you know, you create the, the function code and click on test button. You can run it right there and you can test it before you even push it into Git. There are some new quick starts now that also allow you to discover Red Hat tools like cryo style operator 
And also the experience for the pipelines uh, UI in the developer perspective has been, and the admin perspective has been enhanced. So these are some of the key enhancements in 4.14. We have some more exciting features coming along the way in 4.15, which we'll talk about later on. So in, to, to conclude with everything we presented, we hope that you're excited about all these new enhancements that we have delivered um, in a, for OpenShift 4.14 for all parts of the developer portfolio. Uh, for Developer Hub, which is one of our key products, if you want to take a look at the dev preview today, you can go in into Developer Hub on the link right here and you can apply for it. And you can, once it's approved, you can actually download the image and run it on your own uh, cluster of choice. Podman Desktop as an open source project, very popular. Um, you know, Esteban mentions about creating containers and you know making them run Kubernetes directly from your desktop. It's targeted for application developers. Go to the link here uh, below and you can download it right away and get going with it. Developer Sandbox, always on, free to use, no, no setup required. Just click on a button, get signed up immediately, get access to an OpenShift cluster running live. You get a private environment in it. You get enough um, resources and pre-configured developer tools um, to just get going without having to do, you know, without having to install or even pay for OpenShift. And lastly, the um, developersredhead.com program. If you come in here, if you register for this, if you join our program, you get access to amazing content including the ability to download a lot of the products that we have, get the ability to uh, to bring in um, you know, e-books, to bring in like, learning materials. It's a great program, a lot of free assets available. All you have to do is just click on it. It's a free uh, subscription. You can sign up for it. Thank you very much. I hope you found the content uh, useful, and see you next time. Cheers.